Magandang hapon, isang press briefing ang isasagawa ngayon sa Malacanang. Panoorin po natin ito. Kasama natin ngayon si OPS OIC Undersecretary Attorney Cheloy Garafil. Ma'am? Good afternoon, Malacanang Press Corps, Department of Foreign Affairs Press Corps, and ASEAN Philippine Media Delegation. The ASEAN Summit is the highest policy-making body in ASEAN comprising the heads of state, of government, or ASEAN member states. It is held twice a year and serves as a venue for discussion and policy deliberations on various developments and global issues affecting the Southeast Asian region and beyond. The 40th and 41st ASEAN summits and related summits will be held in Phnom Penh, Cambodia next week. The East Asia Summit, the ASEAN Plus 3 Summit, and the ASEAN Leaders Meeting with the UN Secretary General will be held concurrently. These related summits will review the existing and new areas of cooperation and exchange views on regional and international issues between ASEAN and its dialogue partners. The dialogue partners include Australia, Canada, China, India, Republic of Korea, and the USA. During the trip, the President will also meet with the, Filip with the Filipino community in Cambodia. He will update them on the programs and policies of his administration, especially on the protection and promotion of the rights and welfare of OFWs. To give us more details on the participation of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to the ASEAN Summit next week, we have this afternoon the following officials from the Department of Foreign Affairs. DFA Spokesperson Ambassador Teresita Daza, Office of the ASEAN Affairs Assistant Secretary Daniel Espiritu, and Office of the Asian and Pacific Affairs Assistant Secretary Nathaniel Imperial. So ma'am, ladies first, uh, if you have any statement, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just uh, to thank the OPS for organizing this. It is a joint uh, press conference. We also have the DFA press corps joining us uh, online uh, so that they can answer uh, questions relative to this uh, meeting. This is one of the important meetings that will be held this year. And we're very happy to have ASEC Daniel Espiritu, who is heading uh, Asia uh, ASEAN, and also ASEC uh, Neil Imperial, who heads uh, ASPAC, to actually answer your questions, both on what's happening with ASEAN, but also as well as in terms of bilateral meetings that will be convened during this uh, um, um, event. Thank you. We will, we will now entertain questions. Questions from MPC? Um, we have a question from uh, Jonah Giolagon of Asahai Shimbun. Please expound on the recommendations that foreign ministers will present to leaders in connection mi with Myanmar. Okay. okay. Uh, last uh, October 27, we had a special foreign ministers meeting in uh, uh, Jakarta to discuss the issue of Myanmar. Okay. Uh, during that meeting, the uh, different foreign ministers put forth a list of uh, recommendations to uh, push forward the implementation of the five-point consensus. But uh, this will still have to be processed, so I think I better not uh, preempt the uh, nature of the list at this point because it will still be uh, uh, processed by the some leaders of ASEAN uh, uh, on the way to the summit. And uh, whatever will be processed there will be uh, uh, cleared by the foreign ministers uh, before it could be uh, elevated to the uh, uh, summit leaders uh, during the summit. Yeah, thank you. Um, ASEC, follow up from Zona. Will ASEAN leaders initiate any new action to encourage Myanmar's military to resume or fast track the implementation of ASEAN's five point consensus? Yeah, definitely they will. Uh, and that's why uh, there, there are these uh, 11 uh, recommendations that are going to be discussed. But at this point, there's still no consensus on the 11th, and so uh, this will have to be processed, as I said a moment ago. Yeah. Next question from Neil Jerome Morales of Reuters. 
We are hearing from EU sources that ASEAN countries will uh, have shown for the first time an interest in discussing a possible trade deal with the EU ahead of the EU ASEAN summit in December in Brussels. At the ASEAN summit next week, are there plans to launch exploratory talks with the EU for an EU ASEAN FTA, or will plan uh, or will plans to or are there plans to launch such exploratory talks be discussed? Okay, the ASEAN uh, EU FTA has been uh, has started uh, the the talk on that. The negotiations have started uh, almost uh, ten years ago, but somewhere along the way it stalled, and up to this point there's still no progress in that. And uh, so far. Uh, there's no plan yet, or there's no concrete discussion yet on the resumption of such talks. Now, uh, the coming AS ASEAN summit will be just an ASEAN summit. We'll have a separate commemorative summit in Brussels for ASEAN EU uh, in uh, December, and I think uh, that could be that could be a good venue for uh, a discussion on that. Although there's nothing yet on the table, as far as we are concerned today. Thank you. A second, I just add to. Go know, ahead, ma'am. Uh, for a backgrounder, no. Um, as rightfully mentioned by ASEC, uh, the, the talks on the ASEAN EU FTA has been ongoing. Uh, in 2007, negotiations for that was launched. In 2009, it was suspended. Then again in 2017, it was agreed to be launched to relaunch the uh, discussion on this and a joint working group was established. But uh, since then, there were other developments that were happening also at the bilateral level. ASEAN in, and individually, uh, individual ASEAN countries started also negotiating with the EU in terms of a, a bilateral uh, FTA with them. So Singapore, for example, Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines, and Indonesia commenced negotiations on the FTAs. But the one that prospered was that of Singapore and, and Vietnam. And, and, and this track is also ongoing besides the discussion on supposedly the ASEAN uh, EU, uh, EU F, uh, FTA. Uh, we were informed that there were actually um, discussions that were raised this year for a resumption of this, uh, and the ASEAN actually also did a counter proposal. But it's now, uh, it's still at the stage where there's ongoing discussions on it. Um, but whether it will be launched and it will be undertaken is something that will actually will still be seen because there's uh, the, uh, from the ASEAN's perspective it, we're waiting actually the ASEAN is waiting for the proposal uh, the response of the EU in terms of their proposals uh, presented to them already in August 2022. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Vance Fernandez, please, Vance. Good afternoon uh, to all the men and ladies. Uh, see, you know, uh, for ASEC Daniel Spiritu, aside from uh, the ASEAN, uh, ano pa bang other trips na schedule ng ating Pangulo and their importance? Of course, uh, uh, after ASEAN, uh, he will attend the uh, APEC uh, summit also in uh, Bangkok. And then in December, as I said a moment ago, the uh, uh, ASEAN EU summit in Brussels. Yeah. Uh, what's the importance behind okay. it? Uh, I cannot speak really for uh, APEC, but uh, it's more on the uh, trade and investment facilitation uh, of uh, in the uh, Asia Pacific. It's composed of the 21 countries. So um, uh, the uh, agenda there, especially on post-pandemic recovery, would be uh, very crucial for the uh, economic agenda of the region, uh, especially in terms of uh, resolving uh, the outstanding issues that were uh, spawned in the wake of the uh, Ukraine crisis, uh, especially uh, food and energy security uh, issues, uh, the disruption of the supply, uh, uh, the supply chain, uh, uh, the supply chain in the uh, in the world, and uh, other uh, measures that would uh, would be agreed upon by the 21 economic leaders of uh, APEC uh, to uh, I know, pave the way forward for. Um, more sustainable recovery in the years ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Just add to the issue? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, you asked for significance, but I also want to add uh, to what uh, Asik Dan has mentioned. Uh, November will be quite hectic. Uh, you're correct in that. It's a, it will be a hectic period uh, for, for 
DFA and, and the government because of the number of meetings that are going to be uh, attended and participated in. And aside from the ASEAN, which will be held uh, soon, uh, immediately after will be APEC and in, 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 in the same month of November, where the President, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, and the Secretary of Trade and Industry will participate um, in a leaders uh, week in Bangkok. This will be the first uh, meeting of the President and his administration. And it, it will be significant because we are a founding member of APEC. Uh, as you all know, APEC was established in uh, 1989. It has 21 member economies, and it covers the areas of trade and investment, energy cooperation, conservation of marine resources, telecommunication, and human resource um, uh, development. We, it is significant to the Philippines largely because um, for the Philippines, uh, APEC economies account for 85% 80, uh, of total trade of the Philippines. Over 7.5 million out of 10.7 million, or 70% of Filipinos abroad, call APEC region home. They are also responsible for 68% of the remittances making it with its way to the Philippine economy. And in terms of visitors to the Philippines from APEC, it comprises about 56 percent of our tourist arrivals. Like all meetings, it's an important platform for us to actually share our experiences across different areas and the initiatives that were taken, especially in terms of the post-COVID recovery, our, our desire to actually see how, how more we can have more uh, supply chain resiliencies. So there are a number of areas that are priority to the Philippines that we'll actually discuss. I'm happy to note that uh, with OPS's support, there may be another briefing on, on the uh, APEC, Philippine participation in APEC, that will be held or convened uh, Monday. maybe Monday. On, on Monday. Okay, yeah. Monday, yes. So uh, all questions related to APEC can actually be uh, uh, raised during that meeting. Next question, Raquel Bayan. May we know po how many cabinet officials or kasi po yung bubuo ng Philippine delegation na makasama ni PBVM sa Cambodia po? Okay, at this point the uh, field deal is not yet final. Yeah, but uh, uh, the most probable ones are of course uh, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs and the, and the Secretary of uh, Trade and also uh, the Secretary of the SWD. And why these three? Because they uh, form the uh, three pillars of ASEAN. The Secretary of Foreign Affairs for the Political Security uh, Pillar, uh, the Secretary of Trade for the Economic Pillar, and the uh, uh, SWD Secretary for the Social Cultural Pillar. But at the same time, uh, they will. it's up to the President to uh, decide uh, who others to uh, uh, bring with him, especially on issues that may be uh, uh, relevant to these other Cabinet Secretaries. Yeah. Because actually, uh, those three cabinet secretaries are only the lead in these pillars, but these pillars also include other cabinet members. Okay, thank you. How about ASEAN leaders for world leaders na magkakaroon ng bilateral meeting with the president po? I guess I'll turn it over to uh, ASEC Neil. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, as you know, uh, many world leaders and regional leaders will be present during the ASEAN meetings. So it's a great opportunity for our president to meet bilaterally with his counterparts. Uh, so far, uh, we're still finalizing the bilateral meetings uh, that will be conducted by the president. Uh, but I think it would be safe to say that uh, the first one would be with the host uh, government, with Cambodia. So the president is scheduled to meet with the Prime Minister of Cambodia, Prime Minister Hun Sen. Um, uh, as a matter of courtesy, and it will be their first uh, meeting, and uh, the first meeting uh, uh, as president, no, as the new president of the Philippines. Um, we also expect a bilateral meeting between the president and the Korean uh, president. As you know, uh, the Republic of Korea is a key uh, partner of the Philippines, uh, economically, uh, in terms of defense and security, and then also in terms of uh, tourism, and we have a very multifaceted uh, relationship with the Republic of Korea. So it's very important that they discuss uh, 
current and pending issues between our two countries and the opportunities that uh, we can pursue uh, together with the Republic of Korea. Foremost uh, uh, among the uh, topics that they will probably discuss would be the uh, conclusion of the free trade agreement uh, between our two countries. Now, Korea is only the second country uh, with which we will be con uh, concluding a free trade agreement after Japan. Uh, aside from that, uh, we have a very robust uh, defense and security cooperation, as you well know. Hey, um, and uh, yes, I can't really speak for the other bilateral uh, meetings because they don't fall under the purview of uh, ASPAC, but there will be more than two uh, bilateral meetings being scheduled between the president and his, and his counterpart leader. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a question from Ron Lopez of Agence France Press. We would like to know the expectations from the DFA on meeting. May we know what will the Philippines push for, push for during the meeting? What will they block? Anything to expect regarding the five-point consensus on Myanmar? Okay, let me start probably with the uh, uh, foreign policy priorities of the, of, uh, the president uh, when it comes to ASEAN. Of course, uh, at the top of the list is uh, the post-pandemic economic recovery and uh, transformation. So that would cover uh, food security, energy security, um, digital transformation, and uh, uh, the digital economy, and uh, also climate change, in as much as this is very much uh, related to our uh, disaster management uh, efforts in the Philippines. Now, uh, with regards to international issues, especially on Myanmar, uh, we are very much at the forefront of the uh, uh, call for the implementation of the five-point consensus. Um, and then uh, on uh, other international issues such as uh, Ukraine, uh, we are of course uh, calling for the uh, cessation of hostilities and the uh, return of the concerned parties to the negotiating table. And also uh, uh, we'll have to discuss also the uh, uh, negative impact, the global impact of uh, the crisis, especially on the uh, global economy. Stagflation and again, uh, uh, energy, energy shortage, um, uh, food shortage, and uh, the host of other ramifications of uh, this conflict. Now, uh, the South China Sea will also be there because we always carry that uh, in all of our uh, meetings uh, in the international fora. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Ella Hermonio of Nikkei. In an address last month, President Marcos said that ASEAN has been unable to bring Myanmar to the table to discuss and resolve their country's issues. He even proposed to engage with representatives of their military government. Will President Marcos talk about this matter during the summit and if he will in fact propose a dialogue with, with the representatives of the junta? Definitely the president will carry that issue uh, in all of the meetings of uh, ASEAN. Um, but uh, as for the uh, exact proposals, I think it's better not to preempt that one because uh, that will be fluid and that will be made uh, in conjunction with the other uh, heads of states of uh, ASEAN. And you know, ASEAN decides by consensus, not just by uh, unilateral uh, proposals. Yeah, thank you. And then Santos, Net25. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. And good afternoon po. Uh, since this is the first time po na dadalo si PBBM sa ASEAN Summit, ano po yung naging, uh, uh, naging uh, pagpupulong kanina at yung briefing po ng DFA sa ating Pangulo? Well, you will be surprised. The President is very much informed about ASEAN. In fact, even uh, apart from DFA, apart from our own briefings, because you know, our briefings have been going on even before uh, the ASEAN Summit. He's been getting a uh, copies of briefing papers from us. And there are also uh, issues on uh, the day-to-day -day operations of ASEAN that are brought to his attention through our uh, uh, communications and memor memoranda to him. So um, he's very well uh, versed on the major issues of ASEAN. And so yung kanina, kumbaga pinunan na lang namin yung uh, uh, kaalaman niya on ASEAN. And uh, we were happy to uh, get also his uh, inputs on how to go about uh, 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 the, the meeting in ASEAN, the discussions, and the issues that we will put forward. Uh, so uh, that was a very productive discussion, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Last question from Joyce Rocamora of Philippine News Agency. North Korea has been testing several missiles at unprecedented rate this year. Are there significant moves or actions that ASEAN or the Philippines is expected to make with regard this development in the Korean Peninsula? 
in all of the meetings of ASEAN uh, at all levels, uh, not only in the summit, in the coming summit, but also in the uh, past uh, uh, joint committee meeting as well as in the uh, ASEAN ministerial meeting and even lower level meetings, uh, North Korea has always been a part of uh, the agenda. And our position on that has always been consistent and clear. We have always called for, uh, we have always expressed our concern uh, regarding the uh, ballistic missile uh, tests of North Korea. And we have always called on North Korea to abide by the relevant UN uh, Security Council resolutions on this issue. And we've always called on the parties in the Korean Peninsula to uh, return to the negotiating table to find a peaceful resolution on, uh, on this dispute. Yeah, thank you. So I will also turn the, uh, uh, the table to uh, Asik Neil of ASPAC in as much uh, as uh, he covers more uh, uh, North Korea and uh, the Korean Peninsula issues. Thank you. Thank you, Asik Dan. Uh, I'd just like to inform uh, you that uh, the Philippines has issued uh, another statement on the um, November 2 ballistic missile launches of, of North Korea. And this is already the, the fourth statement uh, to be issued by the Philippines uh, since early this year, uh, basically condemning the missile tests or launches. Um, and uh, as Asik Dan said, uh, similar to the position of ASEAN, calling on all parties to resume uh, peaceful dialogue and negotiations and uh, to, to lessen the tension in the Korean Peninsula. And this is of paramount concern to us because we do have um, around 46,500 46, Filipinos living and working in, in the Republic of Korea uh, in close proximity to, to North Korea. Um, and we have called on North Korea to abide by the relevant UN Security uh, Council resolutions as mentioned by Assistant Secretary Espiritu. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that, that ends our briefing today. Let me thank again Ambassador Teresita Diaz, Assistant Secretary Daya Daza, sorry, Assistant Secretary Daniel Espiritu and Assistant Secretary Nathaniel Imperial for joining us. And thank you, Malacanang Press Corps and the Department of Foreign Affairs Press Corps and ASEAN Philippine Media Delegation for your participation. Magandang hapon po.